Well, back at it here. I have uh, made up the brackets for the fender, the fender mounts. Let's see if they get in here okay. I've been kind of working on other stuff here the last couple days, mainly with the ice arena. They have uh, problems over there, so. possibly pull a wrench, which is about, oh, probably 180 foot pounds. They will not be coming loose, I'll tell you that. And yesterday I made up these, which are the, uh, the fender mounts. So the way those work, they attach to the fender, but then they go in here like this, which, uh, you know, I got to drill them and everything as, as it gets along here. But yeah, I use, I use my little hydraulic, uh, pneumatic hydraulic uh, bender to do those. It takes me about two minutes to make four of them. Pretty handy deal. I'm glad I went to the uh, pneumatic unit rather than the hand pump unit. Much better. Well, as you can see, I got my handy dandy spacers, which work out just perfect. Uh, inch and a half tape. Fenders lay on there with this, a perfect margin. And uh, these are actually trailer fenders. They're trailer fenders. I get these from E-Trailer, uh, where I buy all my fenders and whatever I need for brakes and uh, brake controllers, that kind of stuff. I get it all from E-Trailer. Now, I'm not plugging them because I'm getting paid. I just plug them because they're a good outfit to deal with. Um, but anyway, these fit really nice. I will be cutting. Uh, the edge here, so I kind of custom cut that a little bit. I'm going to be putting mud flaps on this one for the fella. Uh, I've got them over here. I did this from Drag Specialties. There we go. So these are the ones they get. They're actually uh, the rear mud flap. I think these are for Harley Davidson. Uh, so I buy a pair of them. They're kind of pricey, but they work out really well. And I don't use the screws that come with it. I throw them away. I, uh, I use, uh, in this case, I'll use chrome headed uh, acorn nuts. It just looks much nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys ready to go here. I should have, these go really quick. This should work out really nicely. Uh, I got to kind of cut an angle on this because this sits up in here like this. And it actually welds to this edge and up in here. So it doesn't put stress on this edge because if it did, if I just welded it right here, uh, this would would fracture pretty quickly. You'd see a lot of stress cracks and stuff. So I uh, I end up cutting this off here so that I can weld it back in here. So it gives it a lot more support. And then I also there's two bolts that go in here, but then I put a self-tamping screw down here. Uh, it relieves a lot of the stress on this joint right here. I've actually and this. Luckily it only happened to me, but I had my own bike, uh, it broke right here, and this angle uh, actually broke. I've never had one of these break, so pretty tough stuff. This is a half inch by half inch cold rolled, so it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty strong. So we'll see uh, how we get these to fit in there. Yeah, you can see this one is pretty well welded together. Got the arms on there. Got my little curve here, which I use this specialized template here to draw. So this one here, I just have to cut this and uh, clean that up, drill the holes, and she can go in the powder coated oven. 
So that one is uh, pretty much done. That didn't take long. And we'll go over here to the one I'm working on now. So the first thing I do is I measure back nine inches, draw a line, and I get it lined up with the amounts, and just put a little line there. Then I'm going to cut a notch in here for these to fit into. So we'll get that done. notches. Let's see how that looks. Again, this is kind of done by eye. Just want to get them lined up so it fits centered on the wheel. That looks real good right there. But I see something I don't like. I think this one's going to fit up here. A little bit nicer. Yeah, I like that better already. One was too short and the other one was too long, so you switch them back and forth until you get the right fit. This one's good, this one's a little long. I gotta pick it quarter inch cut off of this and oh that's perfect so ideal it fits into the notch all the way but it also butts up against the fender or really close to it make sure she's still square that guy welded up. Alright, well I got this guy roped together here. It looks like I missed, I missed right here. I'm going to grind that a little bit. So as you can see, not only is it welded on the edge, but it's welded back here. It's a little wire there. Inside the fender. So it kind of uh, gives it a little extra strength. I've got the arch on here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut those off both fenders, get them ground nice. Then I can drill my holes and toss them in the oven, and the fenders will be done. So I ran it through the plasma cutter and got it pretty well roughed in. background is actually my exhaust fan. If I don't run that thing it gets really smoky in here. But that pretty much runs all day long. And to drill the holes I got this quarter inch by 12 inch bit which I bought at of all places Harbor Freight. And I thought well probably not going to be very good. It turns out to be a really good drill bit. So this one's done. All I gotta do is drill a little hole right here. It'll be a self-tapper that goes in there after it's all assembled. 
And then I'll wash the inside of this, and this whole thing gets powder coated in here, so it's a little more rust resistant. And that'll be it. I think that whole process took a little over an hour to build those two fenders, so they go really quick. My air compressor will probably kick in here any second now, but I'm going to go ahead and powder coat these. There it goes. So much more durable. That one's in the in the cookie oven. I can tell the wife. I said, "Well, I got a piece in the oven. So I better run back to the shop and take it out." I could actually make a four-foot pizza. That'd be something. Be like John Candy when he was making 48-inch pancakes. But that other gun, if I would have done what I just did there, all that powder would have just went right to the middle. This is pretty well bonded. And it's just static electricity is the only thing that holds the powder in place. So, cookies are in the oven, sitting on a little rack there. Uh, 400 degrees, we'll let them cook for about a half an hour. <laughs> 